cuckoo. It's me, Kyle Webster. Hope you're here for some drawing because that's what we're going to do today on the Draw Along Show as always. You're going to need something to draw with. Could be a pencil, could be a pen, could be a marker, could be a crayon. It could be a femur bone that you got, uh, that you dug up in uh, the cemetery back when you were a grave robber. I, listen, I don't judge, okay? It's, it's whatever you do. I don't know. You take that femur, dip it in some uh, mustard, and draw all over the floor with it, okay? Whatever you want to draw with is fine with me, as long as you're here for some drawing. I want to welcome everybody. Thank you for watching. If you're here watching on be.net slash live, then you're here for the live chat. You can talk to me during the show, and you can tell me what to draw at the end of the show. And I'm going to appreciate one of you, one of you audience members and appreciation station, as we do every episode. So head on over there if you're watching on YouTube or Twitter and you want to be in the mix for the show. Okay, gang? Let's say hi to some folks. We have Glenn. What's up, Glenn? And Pearl and Mercurial and Sam and Afroha. Uh, I see also Clever is here. What's up? And Katie. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Time for us to do some drawing. Hey, quickly, gang. Um, you know, I like jokes and I like puns and all that kind of stuff. A friend of mine was trying to annoy me with some bird puns the other day. And I said, hey, buddy, two can play at that game. <laughs> and I think we'll do some drawing now. How about that? Remember, to do these drawings, you have to be able to do three simple things, and they are a straight line, a zigzag, last but not least, a curvilinear line, okay? Remember, that could be a C curve, could be an S curve, could be going that away. You get the idea. Straight, zigzag, curvilinear. That's all you need to do these drawings. And with that, let's get started. Today, we're going to start with a sort of diamond shape. It's gonna be squished a little bit from the sides. Check it out. Looks like this. One and a two, three and a four. All right, there's my little diamond shape. Now, if you draw it like that, a little wider, you're gonna be fine. Um, it doesn't matter, gang. That's the wonderful thing about these drawings is every time you draw with me, they're going to turn out a little differently, but they're still going to look like the thing that we're trying to draw. Okay? Simple as that. All right, so uno y dos, tres y quatre. There's my little diamond. All right, we're going to then, we're going to do this. Check it out. Little angle to this line here, just a little one. Boop, like that. Another one here. Boop. Got some symmetry going on, right? Lots of symmetry on the Draw Along show when we do these drawings. It just happens to work out that way a lot. Now from the top, we're going to come up a little ways and curve this way. So check it out, up with a little curve. See that? And I'm gonna retrace that line and curve off in the other direction, right? There's more of that symmetry we were talking about that we love so dearly. And I'm gonna then take that line and draw it straight out to about here, all right? So if you wanna make a little target for yourself, you can do that. Not necessary, um, but you can draw yourself a little dot to aim for, bam. Same on this side. Alrighty, there you go. Now between these two lines, I want to connect them with a slight curve, like this, slight curve. And then we're just gonna round that out like that. Okay, so up and over. There's our little curvy line like that. And that is the beginning of our drawing, folks. All right, now. We're going to take this curve here and we're going to carry it on down in this direction. Check it out. Down it goes, stops about there. Okay. Same on this side. Here we go. Stops about there. All right. And then over here, I'm going to draw a curvilinear line from this little corner. It's going to come down and stop right about there. So I'm following along here and I stop like that. Okay. And I'm going to angle it this way. If you want, you can keep that, that line kind of parallel with this line here, like so. Same on this side. You're going to angle it down here and draw it up that way. Lovely. Now here I'm just going to make a nice big dark circle and do the same thing over there. Look at that. That looks interesting. I think we know what that might be. Hmm? Now from here, this little guy, we're gonna angle out this way. We're gonna go past the beak 
down to about here okay check it out down we go and stop right about there okay so down and over and then from there I'm gonna angle out this way all right now it's not gonna be like a right angle that would be too much it's gonna be a little less so I'm looking at a slightly obtuse angle which is not to say it's not intelligent okay but that's what we call it obtuse angle ba -ba -bum -ba -bum -bum, like so all right and then from here we are going to curve down to about here so this is the longest line of the drawing it's going to curve down to about there alrighty so we've done a slight curve and come straight on down like so I want to connect these two here so I'm just going to do that all right whoops I missed it by a little bit which is okay you can just add a little bit of line there and boom you are good to go now over here all right I'm going to want to come down and then I'm going to make another line like this but first I just want to pop out slightly to the left slightly to the left okay got that just a little little bump there and then I'm going to come down this away not the same angle as this note it is not quite the same angle see that come down a little farther like so and then I'm going to angle in this way angle like that alrighty everybody doing okay out there all right um, I think I'm gonna make that line just a hair longer I'll do it like that there we go so these are roughly the same length I would say roughly the same length uh, looks like a totem eagle says clever yeah it does kind of look like a totem eagle I agree with that all right next step we are going to come down this way parallel to here okay check it out a little bit of space and just slightly longer okay so slightly longer than this line okay now here under this line we're going to do a curvilinear line and it's going to stop right about where this line is heading okay check it out stop right about there and then connect those two see that one and two all right and then from here right leaving some space there I'm going to come this way like that okie dokie and then we are going to leave a little space here okay and we are going to draw a little line like that okay and then I'm just going to connect these two Boop. like so and then I'm going to leave a little room and draw another line like this okay and we do this often we'll leave a little negative space in our drawing to suggest that something is behind something else it just kind of cleans things up makes it work pretty nicely a little line like that and then whoops down we go like so all right don't draw this line but check it out notice how these are kind of at an angle to each other which is this is because this is further back from this leg this is the foreground leg and the background leg there okie dokie all right next from here out we go like so and down and then give yourself a little room lining up kind of with that knuckle if you like and we just come down and over down and over and finally from here down and over one and two and three and then out here down and over down and over just two times and we're just gonna let that be okay and there we have our talons now let's not forget the tail check this out from here you're gonna come all the way down like so and then you're just gonna angle up that way slightly and then connect at a slightly different angle like that and there you have your Falcon alrighty okay next step we are going to here in the back of the wing just angle up this way and do that a couple of times all right we're adding some little details here here we're gonna do a little line a little line and a little line okay and that just kind of separates that head area from the body right and then here for those feathers sticking out the back of the legs you can do a couple of little lines and here as well 
can do a few. So very simple, very geometric kind of a take for this animal. Uh, but there are lots of things you can do now to customize this. Uh, you know, you could have some trees off in the distance maybe, right? And you could have him sitting on a rock or something like that. We don't know, right? Lots of things to do to customize this. Okay, so you want to make it your own. Find something to do to make it feel like it's got its own personality. And you know, as I always say, easiest thing to do is just add a little hat. Okay, that's the ticket. Alrighty, folks. Well, that is the you draw it portion of the show. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Remember, you can always watch these back anytime you like. Make that a little smaller and let him live over there on the right side of our canvas. Um, you can watch these back on YouTube or Behance anytime. Just search for Draw Along and Kyle, and you can search for the name of the thing that we drew. So for today's show, when this is archived on YouTube, which will just be right after the show, it'll say Draw Along with Kyle, Falcon. Simple as can be. Um, all right, so we're going to move on to our favorite books, and that's a section I like to do where I talk about books from the... Oh, sorry, before we do that, it is time for Appreciation Station. My mistake. Hey, all right, always sneaks up on me. Today, we are appreciating our good friend, Glenn. Glenn, thank you for watching the show. I want to talk to you about that one time. It was the fall of 1996, and uh, you and I were both second-year students at Hogwarts. Hope you remember this. And uh, yeah, speaking of birds, I wanted to send a letter to my brother, Colin. And I went up to the Owlery, and I kept trying to get my owl, Thistlethorn, to take the letter. And he just was in a really nasty mood, and he wouldn't do it. But... Fortunately, this is a long time ago. I don't know if you still do this, but you had a habit of going around and collecting and digging in the dirt, collecting bugs and grubs and worms and things like that. So you reached into your pocket and you pulled out a nice juicy beetle and handled it, handed it to uh, Thistlethorn, my owl, and he gobbled it up greedily and happily. And then all of a sudden he was in a great mood, snatched up that letter in his beak and off he went. Thank you so much. It's a good thing you had that habit, so I want to appreciate you today and say thanks for being there when I needed you, pal. And uh, there you go. That's Appreciation Station for today. And now we're going to get back to it. Uh, we are going to talk, as I was saying, about favorite books. And so I have picked a book off the shelf today, and it is called Making Comics. Now, I know that title is pretty obvious. What is it about? Well, it's about making comics. Folks, I have to tell you, this is the book that will give you all you need to know, everything, about how to tell a story with pictures, okay? Um, I can't stress this enough, but Scott McCloud has a knack for explaining things as if you never knew about them before. Even though you think you know something, he has a way of explaining it where you go, oh, that's what that is, aha, epiphany, every other page. Um, he breaks it down where you really understand the vocabulary, the language of comics, okay? The symbology of comics, the pacing, um, how to lay out a page in such a way that it reads very clearly and directly for your uh, reader, um, how to create tension where you need it, how to speed things up, slow things down. Um, there is just everything you could possibly think of. So if you're interested in comics. If you're interested in this, you must get this book. Now, there's a companion book called Understanding Comics, but I'm guessing that if any of you out there really want to make comics, you probably have a pretty good grasp of kind of the language of comics because you've been reading them for a while, and so you understand what certain things mean and how word bubbles work and that kind of thing. But it's also a great book, so I'll recommend that one as well. But really, I would say making comics is a must-have for anybody who's interested in making comics. Um, and I love because the narration style is so neat. He puts himself in the book and narrates and talks to you about how things work. That's him with the glasses there. And he just pops up all throughout the book as the narrator, explaining how you go. And what's really cool is for every chapter, it ends with a page of notes that recap everything you learned in that chapter. So it's got an academic quality to it as well. Wonderful, magical book. 
and I think everybody needs to check it out. Making Comics by our friend Scott McLeod. Uh, there it is for anybody who's looking to take a screenshot of that or whatever. Um, brilliant book. Now it is time for the animal and activity. And this is, of course, when you will suggest for me, please, an animal that I will draw. And the animal has to be doing something funny, weird, unexpected, strange, etc. And just as an example, last week we had a chihuahua riding a bicycle. Uh, we have recently done a cow jumping rope. And a few weeks ago we had a, a Tyrannosaurus rex uh, doing some crocheting. You just never know what you're going to get. The suggestions you come up with are always great. Now, while you're coming up with some ideas, which I will, of course, read in the chat. Steven, you just ordered the book. Bravo. You'll love it. Um, I'm going to grab my light blue color for sketching your suggestion. And there it is. That looks good to me. Uh, so I'm ready to go. And we're going to see what we have here. Now, because it was a bird show, I see already we have a bird suggestion. A bird packing luggage for their flight. See that? That's pretty clever. Mercurial, I like it. It's a pun. Very nice. Uh, I haven't drawn a bird in a while, I don't think. Um, we have a cat making reservations. Now, I wonder if that means, Analu, is that a cat making a reservation at a restaurant? Or is that a cat making a reservation for travel? An octopus... Pin boy at a bowling alley, please. Oh, the octopus is handling the pins and putting them back. Steven, that's a very clever idea. I like that one. A penguin pl uh, playing football from a froha. I like that too. We did a penguin not too long ago, but I do like that. Another octopus suggestion, an octopus drawing. That's fun. Um, hmm. Well, these are all interesting. Uh, why don't we try this this octopus at the bowling alley? That's that's an interesting idea. Um, although I have to say, it's going to be tough for me to make that work in the time we have allotted. But we're going to try anyway. Okay, guys? Um, I'll throw out some other suggestions just so you know people are throwing out these. A hedgehog kayaking. That's pretty cool as well. That's from our friend RB. All right, octopus. Let's figure this out. Here we go. So octopus is going to be here taking care of these pins. And we need to get the uh, let's get the legs now arranged. So we're going to have a few of them here. Um, keeping the octopus sort of grounded, I suppose I'd say. I'm trying to make those shapes kind of interesting. Alrighty. Um, and that's three. So we'll have, let's do five legs holding up various pins. All right, so we'll come out this way and we'll have this one wrapping around a pin, okay. And there's our, our little bowling pin there. Uh, and then we'll have one back here that's going to come around that way. So up and over and through. Helps to draw through. So I'm going to draw through. There we go. That just helps me see it better, what, what that shape is. And that one's going to wrap around that way. So we're seeing it wrap the other way around the pin. And we're going to angle that differently. Okay, like that. So one, two, three, four, five. We need three more arms. So let us do one coming around this way. Angle that slightly differently there. I'm going to do this. Angle it that way. One that way, and another one. Coming around and up higher, like this. 
it's coming up like that and it's going to have the pin maybe actually let's do this let's pull that that tentacle around like this and angle it so that the pin is more kind of angling uh, that way okay um, so we understand what's happening there and uh, let's see one two three four five six seven and the last one, I suppose, will have it come out this way around and then just wrap like that. Or maybe a little lower, a little lower. I like that better. So just kind of have it coming out that way. There we go. Like that. So get rid of that. Actually, I gotta get that arm off the ground slightly so it's not dragging the pin too much. Okay, so I like I like that there. And I think that works. There we go. Okay, so and of course we'll have some suggestion of those uh, suction bits at the bottom of, the, of every tentacle there as much as I have time for anyway okay now we're going to use a darker color here and I'll knock this back just a hair and make a new layer there and why don't we see whoops how we can make this go. All right, I'm gonna be a little pickier there about that shape. I mean, eyes eyes really matter, so I wanna get those shapes right. There we go. And a one, and a two. Let me do that, let's do it like that. A little closer to my line of the sketch, I'd like that to be there we go. Um, this is the part, folks, where you've made your life easy because you've done a sketch. So the sketch is what makes it so much easier for me to then move through the final art um, with confidence because there's really no mystery about where the, the bigger shapes go. You know what I mean? Um, if I hadn't done the sketch, you know, it, it'd be intimidating to just sit here and try and make something good uh, from scratch, right? But the sketch gives me such a strong foundation uh, from which to work. And so as I always say, um, don't skip the sketch. You skip the sketch and you actually will probably create more work for yourself um, than if you had taken just a few minutes or however long it takes uh, to work this stuff out um, for yourself. Because it, it really just, it makes a big difference. Um, so, proof's in the pudding. You know what I mean? I don't because that expression has always been really weird to me, but I like it because it's fun to say. But honestly, I've never had pudding and thought to myself, Oof, that proves something important. Maybe I just haven't had the right kind of pudding. All right, you tell me. Whoops. Racing the clock, as always, that's kind of part of this 
show. It's one of the things that makes it fun, makes it exciting. But I think we're getting really close, aren't we? We're getting there. And I have about a minute and a half left, which should be enough time to wrap it up. And again, that sketch sure did help me out. Did it not, friends? It's the best. There we go. Why don't we hide our sketch for a moment, speaking of, and then take a look at how this wound up. What do you think? Does that work for you all? That was fun, gang. Well, as always, I had a great time with you all. I hope you had fun as well. Remember, same time tomorrow for more Draw Along action. Please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind, and I'll say ciao for now.